Hello, I'm Cal. Welcome. In this one, I'm going to take a look at the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This supports the AM4 bracket and also some Intel ones, the LGA 2066 and the 1151. This is going to be part of a retro gaming build that I'm putting together. So, if you're interested in retro gaming or just computer builds themselves, you may want to like and subscribe and follow me for this series. Right, let's open the box up. Better take a look at the instructions before I comment. But that is a nice big heat sink. Alrighty then. This um, seems to be a bit of a Meccano set, to be honest. So what I'm gonna concentrate first of all is just the fan. So when you've got a cooler like this, you can have the fan orientated in different ways. So this is set up as though it's going to be pushing the air through the cooler that way. So what you're going to have to think about is what orientation you want this cooler to be. Me personally, I want it in my belt, if that's the motherboard this side. I want it in this orientation. I don't want it facing upwards even though um, it might be beneficial for that one I want mine that orientation so it's pushing the air through the cooler and out the back of the case not through the top but with my case I could easily have it pushing upwards because the the airflow in that case is pretty good so so with these it is very very easy all you need to do is just take these off that way from the clips and these clips are movable so you can actually move these clips because it's a two-sided cooler you can have a fan on the top and the bottom orientation as I said is the key so you need to decide which way you want it and also where you want the wire to come out so that's one of the things that you need to think of because it's wiring your actual board as well so if it's over this side and the fan header is over here preferable to have it that side in the box it comes with two brackets as well so if you did want to put another fan on the opposite side of the cooler then that's feasible to do in the box it comes with the actual pads as well so you're going to have the brackets themselves to fit and it's got these pads in as well these are sort of like rubberized pads so when you connect it it reduces the vibration and I might also have these screws as well that connect to the brackets but if not these screws should be included with your fan that you purchase these are 120 millimeter fans so as I said this is a little bit of a, a McConnell build but you need to discover on here which apparatus or which way that these brackets fit dependent on your CPU Follow the instructions for either your AMD and Intel or just your Intel side of things. So you can see they have provided coating for this bracket where it touches your motherboard. So you've got Intel and then you've got the AMD side. So you need to pay particular attention to which of these you're going to need for your particular CPU socket, either the AMD or the Intel side. I'm going through the AMD side, my retro gaming build that I'm putting together, I'm going to be using a Ryzen CPU, which is a Ryzen 2400G on a B450 motherboard. So if you're interested in retro gaming, follow me for that. I'm going to go through the build and also the installation of software as well for retro gaming. Right, so this bracket itself, you can see that it's got a little threaded screw through there on a spring, and that's what holds this clip in place onto the cooler. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little circular hole there, and then another one here 
where that fits into another hole onto the clip itself. So I want mine in this orientation where the air is going through that side, pushing it through to the back of the case. It's always best to have the air being pushed rather than being sucked because that's the way that fans are set up. You can get, can get different types of fans but we're not going to go into that in this video. So the orientation is going to be that way so what I need to do is get this through this one put it back into the orientation and then get that lined up with the hole and have it that way so with my orientation I am going to need a very long screwdriver so these plastic rails are not needed so all you need to do is get a screwdriver that fits first of all preferably a magnetic one Just remove them. Just four screws. They're not glued down or anything. They're just held there by the screws themselves. There we are then. That's those removed. So if you've got one of the Ryzen processor coolers that come with the processor itself, then they just screw into these posts here. But because I have got different cooler what I need to do is remove this back plate and then use the back plate that comes with the new cooler so all I'm going to do now is just remove the back plate ready for the new one to fit on the underside so now I'm going to be able to film this bit putting the actual things in because it's going to be a bit awkward Basically, that's the way that it's going to sit, and then the screws and things are going to be fitted through. Just like that. So there you can see if I can just rub through. There you can see that the holes have lined up through the back plate. So as stated earlier then, what we're looking for is E through D. That then goes through the motherboard. So this plastic here protects the motherboard and then it's secured then by the knot. So I'm just gonna get all of these ready and then I can stand the motherboard up and show you how it goes through, fingers crossed. So this is what we're aiming for on the back of the motherboard, i.e not to let any of these components get touched or damaged. All right, so that's what we're looking for on the back. So you gotta make sure you secure this whilst putting the screws through. Okay, so the way that I've done it is I've matched this plate up to the back, making sure I'm not gonna to touch any of these components here. I've threaded one screw through, which I'm holding up with my thumb. And then what I'm gonna do is just attach the first nut here, if I can. It's straight, which it's not. It's very fiddly. I would have thought, would have thought something else through. And they're trying to keep these kits as compatible with each different systems as they can. So I'm going to tighten it fully. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tighten it just to secure it. And then what I do is try this bottom corner now and do the exact same thing while still holding this bracket so it doesn't slip and slide. And um, so sort of like affect these components here. Okay, so now I've got the two in. It's secure a bit more now, but don't tighten these yet because we need this plate still movable so we can get the other ones lined up. Okay, so I've got all four of them in now. As I say, don't over tighten them until you're ready. All right, so it's a little bit of movement's not too bad, but you need to do that in order to get these all in the right brackets. Okay, so they were the furthest one out for this one. I'm just going to tighten this up. So what I did then while the motherboard was standing up is just use this. This comes in the little kit and then all I did was just tighten it to just make sure they're nice and snug. Okay, don't over tighten them. With your dry run then this is the orientation for your actual socket themselves. All right, so these will make contact, some of them won't, until you actually push down on the little spring 
but you can see this is the orientation that this bracket needs to be in so then you need to know or decide which way that you want your cooler to go that way or that way and then fit it through here accordingly this is just a little bit of a dry run then so I'll put the cooler on top plus the brackets as well and just wanted to make sure that everything fitted in all okay and that all the screws match up and they do well, that seems all dry then now so what I'm going to use I'm going to use my whole tube save this little one for something else and all I'm going to do is put a P-size mount in the middle of the CPU. It might be a little bit too much there, but what I do is I get a bit of sellotape and just smudge out all the paste of CPU and get good coating and all of it this is the method I use anyway so you want good dissipation over all of the CPU so I might put a bit too much on there but make sure that it's in the ridges, this bracket. Just rest this properly in the right orientation to save having to keep squiggling it about. So that is in the right position that I want it. Nice and straight. Now you can just Orientate the brackets however I want them. As I say, I'm just going to start with this side and I just move the key. So I'm just going to start with this side. And this one started. And then this side. just nice and snug so you, you don't want to oven tighten these because you, you don't want to damage the actual board itself and the thermal paste looks good there's no over spill over the sides so I've just got the fan to put on then now so what you need to do is decide where you want to route it because you've got to think about wires and then with the fan headers it's a shame this one's white but you can see there's a little slot there and that little slot fits into the header and you'll see there's a little slot on the header itself so that's one I'm going to plug it into shame these are not uh, black instead of white but there you go so just line it up and then push it down and it'll slot in and then all you need to do then is just put the clips on one side don't put any stress on the actual fans itself and then just put a little bracket over Try not to trap your finger and then it'll just click in. There we go. Nice and in. And just make sure it's nice and lined up with the top of the actual cooler. So you're getting full benefit of the fan itself. And then what I'm going to do is tie the wires up a little bit later. 
bit uh, surprised they've got a bright yellow one on, but I can take that one off. But there is one here which says void if removed, so I don't know whether it's working yet. So I'm just going to test that before I actually take any of these labels off. This is part of a retro gaming build that I'm working on, so please give me a like and follow. Plenty more to come. My name is Cal. Have a good morning, afternoon, or good evening. Farewell till next time, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.